we're going to uh, uh, we're, we're going to learn how to do a double leg takedown to a knee lock. Uh, here, here we go. We're coming in. We're shooting with a double leg takedown, and I'm a little high, but that's okay because I'm uh, I'm going to hit him in the chest, uh, in the abdomen, really hard, and knock him to the ground. And when I do that, because we're setting this up for a, a knee bar, so I'm I'm going to step over. When I throw him, I'm ducking him down. I'm going to keep his leg in there. And I'm going to step over his leg. So I've knocked him to the ground. His leg is high in the air. Now I'm going to step over the top of that leg. And when I do, I'm going to lock my other leg around it. I'm going to bring it up and, and secure it underneath my elbow and my arm. And I have his el and his, his, you can see his foot is trapped completely under my arm. Now from here, folks, I have him in a really bad position. I can just twist that knee and I can pretty well break that knee off. I mean, I can do a lot of damage to his knee in this position here. And I can generally get him submitted pretty easily there. And he can't do much about it because I'm near in his groin there. I can, you know, I have a really tough, a tough position for him to try to overcome. So I've thrown him down. I've locked it. From there, I could fall back and do a knee bar or something if I wanted to. But this is a great little uh, leg locking technique there that you'll be able to try and you'll be able to use in your jiu-jitsu matches. Here we're going to do a head lock with an arm bar. This is one of the most familiar things that the big muscle guys try to do when they're fighting, and even wrestlers try to do sometimes in the beginning when they learn to do wrestling and fight and stuff. Uh, uh, here I've thrown him to the ground with a head lock, and I've got him, and I'm squeezing up on his head. Now, some people, you can just squeeze their head up and do this neck crank, and they're going to give up because they're hurting their head so much. Uh, it hurts. But what I want to do is reach down with his right arm and secure that, and I'm going to put it underneath my front leg. I'm going to turn it upside down and put it underneath my front leg. Now, that's locked it in a terrifically uncomfortable position for him. So I don't have it under my back leg. I have it locked under my front leg. At the same time, I'm ripping up on his head. So now when I lean forward with my legs and my hips, I'm dislocating his elbow and his shoulder. And I'm ripping up on his head, and I'm tearing his head off. And uh, that's a great, great technique, and it, it's used a lot, a lot by the big muscle guys. And maybe when they get started on it, it's hard to stop them. So you want to be careful when someone throws you in a headlock that you don't wind up in this position. By you learn to control your arms and immediately start getting out when they start doing it. Here's a basic key lock. I'm in a, I'm in a nice mount here. I have my arms out front in the mount for, for secure. I want to balance myself. You don't just stand up on top of him. I'm up too high, I'm going to be pushed over. So I have my arms out front, and I'm, I'm actually walking him out for a little bit of security here and for balance. Now I'm going to make my opponent try to sort of reach up as I, as I lay down on him. He's going to put his hand up to try and fend me off because I could be punching him in the head or I could be elbowing him in the head. And he's going to reach up and try to defend himself. And when he does, I'm going to secure his left arm with my left arm. Then I'm going to reach over and secure it now with my right arm. So I blocked it with my left. Now I'm going to reach over and secure it with my right. And here's what I want you to notice. So many people do that and they're way out to the side. I want to do that, but I want to take my elbow and I want to force it into his head. I want to break his neck back. I want to force it into his head and really stretch his neck back and uh, crack it back. Just really put a lot of pressure on his neck and crack it back. That gives me a terrific amount of leverage to put in my uh, Americana on him. So from there, I'm going to reach underneath his arm, underneath, lift it up, and I'm going to grab my own wrist. This is called the figure four. Now, don't just lift it straight up in the air. If you lift it straight up in the air, it doesn't do anything. It, didn't, it just bothers him a little bit, but that doesn't hurt him. I want to drag it back towards his butt. So I'm going to keep it low on the ground and drag my hands back towards my butt and his butt, low on the ground. Then I lift up, and that breaks his shoulder. So you don't just dr lift it straight up in the air. That doesn't hurt. I'm dragging it back towards his butt. Dragging it back towards his butt. And uh, that seems to be a really effective technique, and it, it hurts a lot. When someone's getting you in that position, you want to be do it slow. Don't do it fast. If you do it fast, uh, that'll, that'll, that'll tend to create a lot of damage to him, and you could break his shoulder and put him out of the, out of the class, and you get in trouble with your teacher, and you don't want to hurt your fellow uh, partner and stuff. So do this slow. All jiu-jitsu moves should be done slow. Now I can do it. This is a Japanese jiu-jitsu finish from the same thing. So I've locked him up here. Now I'm actually going to bend his elbow straight up in the air and I'm going to reach down and grab a hold of his wrist. 
Now, a lot of you MMA folks have never seen a wrist lock done from this position. Let me tell you something. When I lock that wrist up from this position, uh, that's going to really that's going to really put a lot of pain in on him. And uh, what you're doing, you're locking it up, uh, and you're going to pull up and twist it. And that that really puts a lot of pain on him. And and uh, I just can't emphasize enough how much this hurts. And, <laughs> and so if you'll try it, it just really hurts. So try it. Now we're going to do an elbow lock. Here I'm doing something you probably haven't seen before. And what I've done is I have uh, I have taken his hand and I'm in the mount and I pushed his elbow across. And instead of wrapping it around, I've set up on it and I pushed it straight to the ground to prevent him from rolling over. So I've stretched his arm completely straight out. I've put his elbow on the ground, and I've completely rolled him over there. Now, this is going to create a terrific amount of pressure there. And what I'm going to do is completely continue to roll him, and I'm going to lift it straight up in the air. When I lift it straight up in the air, I now have it locked against my body, and I have him in an elbow lock. And I can continue to, I can submit him from right there, but if not, I'm going to fall straight back, keep my knees very tight tucked to his head, keep his thumb pointed straight up or so he's completely locked. I'm going to lift my hips and I can break his elbow off. This is a headlock submission where I'm going to take his front arm. I've locked around his head and I'm locking it underneath there. And I'm going to start yanking and cranking his neck. It's a little different than we did before, but I've got the front arm locked and that's what makes it work so good. And now I'm going to take his arm and straighten it out. So I now I have Look at his, his elbow is in big trouble there because his elbow has now been straightened out and I've got his head locked there. So I can break his elbow as I squeeze this here and at the same time I'm really lifting up on the head. Now you can also, uh, you can also certainly punch him in the face and, and just really work him out there. So this is a tough position for him to be in. This is one of my favorite moves. I'm in a side control and I'm going to immediately flip over from the side control and wrap my left leg over the top of his neck. And you'll see his arm has been pushed up there too. So I'm going to reach up, flip from the side control, and immediately wrap my left leg over the top of his neck. This gives me a terrific amount of power. Now I'm going to take my legs and put them in a figure four. When I put my legs into that figure four, he's just in a big amount of trouble, and I can just break his neck right there. I can choke him unconscious, and I also have his elbow up in the air. Because I have his elbow up in the air, I can break his elbow. So he's in double, triple, quadruple trouble there. And this is just simply rolling from the side, wrapping your leg around his head, Get it really secure. Now I figure for it and really squeeze my muscles together. Now don't do this hard. Don't do this hard because you can hurt somebody's neck. You can do a lot of damage, so you don't want to uh, damage his neck. You don't want to damage his arm. So do it slow, but it's a great technique. I want to finish it from here. If he tries to keep from taking the arm, I grab his wrist and I reach underneath. And I'm going to, so here he's, he's trying to keep me from taking his arm. And lock and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab his wrist and reach underneath and I'm going to put my elbow in the front of him. Now look what I've done. I have now switched my position and I'm rolling back and now his elbow is trapped over the top of my hip, locked completely straight, and my legs are around his neck in a figure four. So boy, you're in a big trouble here. If I've I've, I've taken my hand and slid it underneath and around his elbow, locked it back securely over my hip. Now I have him in a figure four, and look at this. All I have to do, when I just pop that elbow up and I squeeze his head, man, he's going to he's gonna submit. He's going to go unconscious. I'm going to just snap his elbow. Just terrific amount of pressure there. Terrific amount of pressure there. So learn that move. It's, it's pretty enjoyable. Now we're doing a uh, Americana, or this is a Kimura. I've got him here, and I've rolled him on his side, and I'm standing in, in a north, or sitting in a north-south position. I'm going to reach underneath and rip his arm up. And I'm going to hold it completely straight up in the air so it's completely parallel to his body. The secret to this is that his arm has to be parallel to his body. When his arm goes parallel, now I can take it and just twist it and break it. I can take it, since his arm is going parallel, I can take it and twist it and just tend to break it right off. So it's a really powerful, powerful lock there. And this is called the Kimura. It's used a lot in uh, mixed martial arts, and it's a great technique to learn. Be sure you practice it. You, the, the whole secret is... You've got to get it where it's completely parallel with his body. If he's holding, the, the counter for this is for him to hold on to his gi or hold on to his pants or his shirt. 
So what you want to do is just rip it off of that by using all the force of your hips instead. Just rip it off of that by lifting up and lifting forward and twisting it and turning it, and you're going to rip it off, and now you got it secured there, and he's in trouble. Now I'm going to do a leg lock from side control. So here he is in, in the side control on me, and my legs are up high, and he's going to reach over. He's got his left hand wrapped around behind my neck. And at the same time, he's going to reach down and grab and hook my ankle. Now he's going to take that ankle and lift it and pull it straight back. And that really puts my leg in a bad position, and it puts me under a lot of strain. And it hurts a lot, and it's going to cause a lot of damage to my body. So you've got to be really careful when you do this, because this is a leg lock from a side control. He has his legs up. He's not paying attention. I'm reaching underneath, securing that ankle, and twisting that knee. And, and boy, that'll just break his knee, folks. So be very careful when you do this. It's easy to do. doesn't take a lot of talent or, or practice to do it. You have the pressure there. You secured his head. Now you reached underneath, grabbed that ankle, and lifted it up, and broke his knee. So it's a pretty sweet, sweet move here. Here I'm doing a sweep from the bottom to get on the top. I'm going to hold him very tight. I have my ar his arm in an underhook there, and I'm going to hold his head. I'm reaching here, and I'm going, to, I'm going to shrimp over to the side, which means I'm going to swing my hips out to the left. When I swing my hips out to the left, I'm going to dig my leg, my right leg underneath him, so I can lift his back leg. So he's not in a good position there. His knees are up too high. He's not. His knees aren't wide. He's got his butt up in the air. So I'm holding him tight, securing him tight. His knee, legs are up in the air because he hasn't got his legs spread wide. So I can dig my foot in there and get it underneath his leg. Now I got that in there. I'm going to turn and twist him. And I'm just going to flip him right in a circle. And I'll wind up right on top. So it's a really simple twist. So I have my leg there. I have it inside. I reach in there. Hook it inside of his leg by shrimping myself out. Hook it inside of his legs. Roll him right over. Wind up in a perfect mount position. Now this is called the jumping guillotine, and we're doing this because we're on a trampoline. If you're doing a jumping guillotine and he's not strong enough to hold you, two things can happen. One, you can hurt his back severely, and two, he's going to break your back because he can't hold you in the air when you jump in the air. You're gonna, he's going to smash you right on the ground when you're in the air, both your legs up and your hands around his neck. You can't possibly break your own fall. So you're going to injure his back if you don't do it right, if he's not strong enough. You're going to injure your own back if you don't do it right. So I practice it on a trampoline. Or I practice it on two mats in the, in the room. So you've secured the headlock. This was done last week on the WC46 by one of the fighters who did a jumping guillotine. So you're going to get that guillotine in there deep, and you're going to just jump up with both legs and secure it around his neck and wrap those legs around his waist. And now you're just going to crunch him, and, and he's going to go unconscious. What you've got to be careful for here is that if, you know, the guy did it in the UFC. He did it against the fence, so the guy just really wasn't able to uh, to do get a good jumping, running forward thing. But the counter, kind of, this is just a jump forward. But they're being choked so hard here, they just don't have a like they 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 they're so off balance that they just really can't counter it there. This is how you do the jumping guillotine, but it's a very dangerous move. Uh, it's going to hurt the guy's back if he doesn't if he's not strong enough. It's going to hurt your back if you're not if you don't have know how to land and if he falls down on you. So, but it's a great technique. All right, we're going to do a little karate and jiu-jitsu techniques together now here. So here he is. We're in a good fighting stance. He's, he's getting ready to come in there. He's talking to me. I'm going to snap up a front snap kick right into his gut. When I do a front hard snap kick right into his abdomen with my heel, that's generally going to stop 90% of the fighters, you know, because you do a front hard snap kick right into his gut, that's going to slow him awful lot down. Then I'm going to drop down, and I'm going to do a step in, and I'm going to do a double leg, bending my legs big time, Doing a double leg, reaching around his knees, round his butt, and lifting straight up in the air. So I did a boom, a hard front thrusting snap kick. Then I reached down and picked him straight up in the air. Oh, now from here, pretty obviously he's going to be in trouble. From there, I can just smash him right on the ground. I can break his back. I can knock him unconscious. I can take his wind out. He's in a lot of trouble when you get him in this position. Here the opponent's trying to reach for me, and I'm going to immediately count for it, counter it when he reaches for me with a vicious side kick. Boom. At the same time, I'm going to hold that hand that he was reaching with, because he's reaching for me. He might even have it on me, but I'm going to twist and do a vicious side kick and hold that hand. That keeps his ribs exposed. When I hold your hand and side kick you, the chances of you uh, recovering from that are slim and none. If your hand is down, you can squeeze into it, and you can block it with your elbow, and you can counter and stuff. But if I'm holding your arm out and I side kick you, you're in a lot of trouble. 
then I'm going to step around, step around and get you in a rear neck and choke and break your neck or choke you unconscious. So he's reaching for me. I grab his hand. I hold his hand. It gives you a lot of strength, a lot of power, and a lot of movement. I snap my sidekick up and break his ribs, come around, secure the back of his neck. Great technique. 